You guys, we are about to work on the first project in the new DIY studio. Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on home and DIY projects every single week. Lately, I've been working on a lot of home DIYs and today I wanna focus on making some DIY decor. I'm currently working on our movie room, so I'm trying to figure out all the decor pieces, furniture, and just the overall vibe. And of course, I also wanna make some items that are a little bit more pricey and also just harder to find in stores. So today I'm going to try and DIY some of these really trendy items that that I've been seeing and bookmarking. Before we jump into it, I wanna thank Factor for sponsoring today's video. I am a huge fan of them and I think you guys will love them, so I'll talk a little bit more about them later. For now, let's jump into the first project and get started. Okay, so this first piece is something that I saw on Kelly Wurstler's Instagram. I literally freaked out when I saw it because I thought it was so cool. And it's basically these melting disco balls. She basically was selling a collection of these on her website. So of course I was nosy and I wanted to see how much they were. And when I saw the price, I was just like, how? <laughs> the most expensive one on here is $22,000. They also have one that is $16,000 and I was just like, there's no way that I could spend that much on a disco wall. These are limited edition and they're hand sculpted. So you are buying an original piece of art. So I understand why it is that expensive. So I did go and try to find something a little bit less pricey. So I found this one from France and Sons and I love the shape of it, but it is $3,000. So I decided I think I can just make it myself. So I have some cardboard, a bunch of craft paper, and also paper mache. So these are the materials that I'm going to use to create our melted disco ball. I have a loose game plan of what I wanna do to make this happen. So let's see if I can DIY it for less. When I was first planning out this project, I thought I was going to use cement and make this really heavy, but then I realized that I am very clumsy, so I wanna make this something that is lightweight and also something that is not going to break as easily, so I think cardboard is the perfect solution. And in the design, you'll see that it's kind of hanging off the table, so I thought that I would just use the corner over here and that way you don't have to tape anything it's already connected and then i want to do two half circles on both ends here and then cut it out i'm gonna freehand this and kind of draw two half circles on both sides of where the fold is i basically just looked at a picture of that disco ball and tried to gauge what that shape looked like and then with the pair of scissors or an exacto knife you can just cut that out all right, so this is the basic shape that I'm working with and you can definitely customize this to whatever blobby shape that you want. This is kind of what it looked like in the photos. So once I bend it, it's going to look something like this from the side. This is gonna be the top. I wanna make it a little bit heavier. So I think I'm gonna glue a few more pieces of cardboard on top just so that it weighs a little bit more. I've been hoarding a lot of cardboard, so this definitely comes in handy. So I'm cutting out little blocks of this thicker cardboard and I'm basically trying to create kind of a little mountain of cardboard. So with each layer, it's just gonna get smaller and smaller. And again, I'm just doing this to kind of add a little bit more weight to this side of the disco ball. So when you place it on your surface, it doesn't tip over. And I, of course, am gonna use hot glue to just stick them all together. I think this just speeds up the process and it also gives it a really strong bond. I then realized that I needed to figure out how to stabilize the cardboard so that it would keep that right angle. And what I ended up doing was put another piece of that thick cardboard and that just overlapped over that corner fold. And then I glued another piece right underneath that to support it. That way it will keep its shape. And I also just added a lot more hot glue for good measure. Here is where we're at so far. I honestly was not too sure of how I was going to construct this, but it's very sturdy. As you can see, we have that nice right angle that will fit right on the edge of a table. This thing is pretty sturdy, so I think we can go ahead and build on it. So you can use newspaper or craft paper, whatever scrap material that you have, we're just gonna basically clump it on top of this. And I'm gonna use a combination of hot glue as well as masking tape to really hold it down. As you guys know, I'm a little bit of a hoarder, so I did keep this craft paper from an old package. I knew that I would probably use it in the future, so I'm glad that I have this because then this project is basically free to create that base. And you'll see that I'm using a combination of hot glue and masking tape to build this out, but be careful when you use hot glue, especially when you're crumpling up a lot of paper. I ended up actually burning myself a couple times here, so please be careful when you do this. There really is no right or wrong way to build this out as long as you get to whatever shape you like, that is all that matters. 
What are your thoughts on this process so far? Very therapeutic. I don't know, there's something like about ripping paper <laughs> and just crumpling it up and gluing it. So far it's looking good. I think what I'm most worried about is this bottom part and trying to make it look, you know, intentional. Are you trying to make it look like a bean? This kind of does look like a bean. Really no right or wrong way to do this. I did find that clumping the paper and also twisting it did a good job of achieving the look that I was going for. Something that I think really adds to that blob shape is making sure that you actually get it over the edge. That way it really rounds it out and gives us that melty blobby disco shape that we're going for. So once I got over to the other side, I actually used something to prop it up. I found that this shape is really tricky to work with, but I did get it done. And again, on this side, I'm just using the craft paper so that it's a little bit lighter. And once you build it up to a shape that you're happy with, just make sure to cover the entire thing with masking tape, and this is just going to smooth it all out. Here is the beginning of our melted disco ball. I know it looks a little bit questionable right now, but the shape is right. And if I put it on the edge of the table, it sits perfectly, so I'm very excited to cover this all up. This basically serves as our base layer, and then on top I'm going to put the paper mache clay that is going to smooth everything out and really give this a little bit more weight as well. I'm gonna make my mixture and then we can cover this. <laughs> I'm adding water into my paper mache clay with a watering pot because why not? We're gonna give that a good stir and this is basically an instant mix, but if you wanted to, you could totally make your own paper mache clay at home from scratch. And once that was nice and incorporated, I added in some joint compound. This is gonna help harden and also smooth the clay even more. Now we're ready to start applying the paper mache clay. So I'm using a rubber spatula. This is honestly the best way to apply it. It makes the paper mache clay go on so smooth and easy, and it's definitely a must have in your toolkit if you are working with paper mache clay. This is a fairly new medium to me since I only started using it about a year ago, but it has quickly become one of my favorite ways to make DIY decor. The possibilities are honestly endless. The only downside is that it does take a little while to dry, so I always wait at least 24 hours afterwards, but sometimes you might have to wait two or even three days. I basically did one even layer all around, and then if there were any spots that just looked a little bit too bumpy, I just added on more. I tried to make it as round and smooth as possible because I know it would be easier once we stick on those mirror pieces, but this was looking really good at this point, so now I'm just gonna let it sit to dry. I just added a space heater, so hopefully that will dry a little bit quicker, but now I am starving, so it is time for lunch. We are actually big Factor fans, so when they asked to partner up, I of course said yes. Brian was actually the first one who ordered from Factor, I think, half a year ago now, and I started eating them for lunch, especially on days where I just did not prep anything. Especially with doing DIYs, I found that there were so many days where I was just skipping lunch because I was so into my project and I just did not have time to actually meal prep anything. It was becoming such a bad habit, so I actually started ordering Factor for myself, so both of us really love it. And today I'm having the Chipotle rubbed pork chop. It comes in a package like this and it has all the nutrition information on the back so you know exactly what you're getting and all you have to do is to pop this in the microwave or the oven and you're ready to go. If you're new to Factor, they basically make having a balanced meal super simple. Each of their meals are cooked from scratch from chefs, which I think is incredible. And they also taste really good, which is really important to me and that's why we keep ordering from Factor. I don't have to spend meal prepping or going to the grocery store or even cooking, especially for lunch. I think that is where I really struggle. So I love that I have these meals ready to go. They're delivered fresh to your door and also are never frozen along the way. And they're always updating the menus on a weekly basis so you can choose from your favorites or you can let them choose based on your meal preferences or your past order history. They have meat and seafood and also veggie based dishes and if you follow a specific lifestyle they also have keto as well as smart calorie and also chef favorites. They also have factor plus which is an add-on so I like to order their smoothies especially for breakfast. That also includes juices and soups and additional sides or any veggie dishes and also desserts. If you want to add more onto your box you can totally do that. They are giving you guys 60% off with my code TINALAY60, which is a huge saving so you can try it out for yourself. I'll leave all that info in my description box. Having Factor on hand has seriously been such a huge help to me, so I hope you guys love them as much as I do. Okay, time for a taste test because Brian and I haven't had this one yet, but it looks really good and it smells really good. Mmm, I totally recommend it. It's so good. It comes with the vegetables too on the side. Oh, this is such a good lunch. Cheers! 
It has basically been two days and this is finally dry. So it is rock hard now. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint this. Since this is white and we definitely are going to have gaps in between the little mirror pieces, I wanna make sure that it is silver so that it matches. So I'm gonna give this a quick coat and it should be ready. <music> So now we can actually beautify it and make it look a little bit prettier than what it looks like right now I have a bunch of these sheets of the mirrored squares and I actually was testing how to make like a little circle for the beginning of it So I have this piece right here and all I did was use some scissors and cut it I think I'm gonna sand it down a little bit more But I kind of rounded off the edges and I think it'll be fine and this is also adhesive so you can just place it wherever. Let me see where I'm supposed to put it. I'm gonna start like right here, I think. Yes, that looks like a good spot. One down, a million more to go. When it came to adding this on, I was kind of winging it because I was trying to figure out how to make this look as seamless as possible. So I did end up cutting some more of those mirror pieces just to fill in a little bit of the gaps at the top, but I really didn't worry too much about gaps on other parts because real disco balls usually have gaps anyways, so that is totally fine. Plus with the new silver backdrop, it blends in pretty well. I painstakingly did this one by one instead of by strip because that is just the look I was going for and I also tried my best to make these offsets so you'll see that it has a little bit more of a brick pattern. You could totally do this project strip by strip but I'm just a little bit picky so this was worth it to me. I also want to note that since this is glass, make sure to handle it carefully and work slowly. I feel like I'm bedazzling a giant rock. Doing it piece by piece like this honestly takes so much dedication, so I totally see why those sculptures cost so much. I will be auctioning this off. Starting bid starts at $3,000, guys. Growing up, my parents had a disco ball in our basement and it definitely was the party room of the house. My parents loved to karaoke and throw parties every week. So I love that I get to have a little piece of that in my home just with a little bit of a twist. Plus, I was able to do this on a super budget because the only money that I spent on this was just on the mirror tiles, which were only $17. This was just looking better and better as I continued to add on the mirror tiles. And once I got to the edges, I did cut a few pieces here and there, but I really was not too worried if it didn't look perfect because once you look at it as a whole, you really don't see any of those imperfections. So don't worry too much if it's not perfect. Okay, we are nearing the end here. Are you guys ready to see the final reveal? Here is our DIY melting disco ball. Look at how happy this room looks with the disco ball in it. I wish that we could just keep it in here. Oh, so pretty. Moving on to our next project. Something that's been really trendy lately in interior design is checkerboard. And I just realized I don't have any checkerboard in my house at all. So today we're going to change that. I had this vision in my head for a checkerboard tray. So I went online to see if there were any available. I was specifically looking for one that was wood and had the wavy checkerboard pattern. So I didn't find anything like that. So here we are, we are going to build our own and I'm actually using scrap wood that I found in my little lumber rack. I have this pine board over here and then I have some pieces of trim which I'm going to use as the lip of the tray. This is pretty much the perfect size but I think I'm going to cut down one of the ends just a little bit because there is a little chip here so I'm going to get rid of that and then I'm going to measure these out and then make a little frame for this. We are essentially building a frame around the board to create a lip for the tray. So I'm using leftover lattice trim for this part and I'm cutting it with my miter saw to give it a 45 degree angle on each end. Instead of doing exact measurements with my measuring tape, I'm actually just taking the piece of wood and basically marking off where the edges are. So here I already have one edge cut, so I'm going to line that up with this corner over here. And once that's lined up, I'm just gonna make my mark right here and then use my square to get a perfect straight edge and that way it'll fit. Okay, let's test it out and 
it's a perfect fit. This is coming together beautifully and to attach it, you can totally use some brad nails. I want to make this look as seamless as possible, so I'm going to use some wood glue. And then I also have a strap clamp here, so that should hold it together and be strong enough for this all to bond. When gluing it together, I made sure to put the wood glue onto the miter cut edges as well. This is going to give you a really strong bond between the two joints so that everything stays in place. I've actually had this strap clamp for a while now, but this is my first time actually using it, but it is a great tool to have, especially if you are someone who makes a lot of frames and boxes like I am. It keeps everything squared and clamped together, and it's a little bit easier than using a whole bunch of clamps. Once everything's in place, I'm going to tighten it so that it's held together while the glue dries down. While we wait for the tray to dry, I'm gonna get started on my design. So I use my Cricut because I think this is the easiest and fastest way to do this. I basically found a really cool wavy checkerboard pattern and I got it cut out on some permanent vinyl here. And now all I'm gonna do is just to take this off. Oh, this is gonna be so fun to weed. I don't know if you guys can tell, but here it is. I just basically have to go into every other square and take it out. This looks so cool and not gonna lie, I almost messed up like three times. So I'm so glad that I didn't because this is perfect. Okay, so I'm starting off with the corner here and I'm sticking the vinyl right onto the tray. And when I peel away from the transfer tape, you guys are gonna see me struggle a little bit because I accidentally used a stronghold tape. This actually lifted the vinyl up with it, so it was a little bit tricky, but I did get it done. It just took a little bit more time. So learn from my mistakes and just use regular transfer tape. Another alternative instead of using vinyl for this is actually to hand paint it with just a brush or you can even use tape and spray paint. I just went for the vinyl so I can get extra crispy sharp lines for this funky wavy checkerboard pattern. And let me know what you guys think. Are you into the checkerboard? Are you not into the checkerboard? I feel like this is such a classic design that still is timeless even though it's a little bit trendy right now. I still love checkerboard through and through. I am a little obsessed with this. I think it came out better than I thought it could. Like, look at this pattern. It is so fun and you could totally leave it like this and this would look super modern. But of course, I wanna add on my little bead legs here. And I'm just gonna use some hot glue here just to glue it onto the bottom. And then we'll add a top coat so that everything is nice and sealed. We are going to seal this baby up and I think it looks so good. I was totally ready to buy a tray for my coffee table. And I'm so glad that I just just had this vision to create a tray like this. Everything that I used for this project, I already had on hand. So this was essentially free. I didn't have to buy anything new. That was an added bonus to DIYing this instead of buying it. And I am absolutely in love with it. All right guys, so moving on to the last project, I want to do some sort of gallery wall in the movie theater room. So of course I wanted to DIY a piece of art and this is the one that I had in mind. I've had it pinned on one of my boards for a really long time and mostly I see people cutting it out with MDF, which I think is a great option, but I know not everyone has power tools to work with. So I wanted to come up with a solution to recreate this type of artwork without having to use power tools. So instead we're gonna make it with cardboard and these are literally the pieces that are left over from the disco ball. That box is getting put to good use. This is my current plan, so let me show you guys how we're gonna make it. I started off by sketching my design onto the canvas and this allows me to visualize it and also to get exact measurements for everything when I go to cut it out. I just find it to be easier for me to do rather than cutting it out first and then having to size it down later. I did freehand some of this and also just use round objects around the house and this helped me get the exact design as what I did in my thumbnails. 
It has been quite a while since I brought out my X-Acto knife for a DIY, so this was a lot of fun for me. And if you have a square or any straight edge, that will be really helpful to get in there and get really straight edges. I totally could have used MDF for this project, but I was determined to do this project without big power tools. I know there are a lot of you watching who don't even use power tools, so I wanted to share an alternative version that is more approachable, but feel free to use whatever tools and materials you'd like to get the same look. Here's where we're at. This has a really nice 3D element to it. And now you can really finish this however you want. So you could put joint compound on here. I think that would make a really cool texture. I want to give this a lot of texture. So I'm actually going to use some tissue paper and Mod Podge. This is one of my favorite ways to add texture to any piece of art. So I'm just going to pour some Mod Podge right here. And then all I do basically is take my tissue paper and then rip it into little pieces. So probably something like this size is good. And all I do is basically lay it on top and then add my glue. And as you're doing this, you're trying to create texture. So you just want to push it on itself. And that way it'll stay and give you some really nice wrinkles and creases and give this some interest. Doing this project has really gotten my gears going on what else I can create for my home. Especially after refreshing my DIY studio, I feel like phase two of my home makeovers is in order and I would love to hear any of your ideas on projects that you guys would like to see. I really feel like I'm still trying to figure out what my home decor style is and right now it's a little bit of everything. I'm actually not sure what my home decor style would even be called, but I used to be really into boho, then that evolved into more of a modern boho look. And now I'm just trying to figure it out and I'm sure a lot of you guys are too at home. There are just so many fun and unique decor styles out there and I think that creating DIY decor in these different styles just helps me find my own personal decor style and it also just adds that extra personal touch to my home which you can never go wrong with. So this is all dry now and you guys can see there's so much texture and now you can paint this however you want. You actually could put joint compound over this if you'd like or you can paint it or spray paint it. I think I'm gonna go the spray paint route. Before finishing this project I did create a little wood frame. I just made this with some extra wood that I had laying around and I think it just ties it all together. And after that, it's ready to be put on display. Okay guys, what do you think about those projects? I am really excited to get into the space and actually style all those. My favorite out of the three probably is the disco ball just because it took so much time to do, but it was so worth it because I think it looks amazing. But I would love to hear which one was your favorite in the comments. I hope you are ready because the basement is gonna be done super, super soon. And thank you again at Factor for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check out all the details to get 60% off of your first box. If you recreate any of these projects, make sure to tag me on Instagram. I love seeing your recreations and I will put some on the screen. I feel like I haven't done that in forever. I really love seeing all of your projects so thank you guys for tagging me and sharing them with me. That is all for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!